In this video, I'm going to be showing you my process for creating a pixel art character portrait. This video is based on a community challenge where I asked people to make a character portrait. Stick around to see them at the end. I wanted to do a character portrait of Lumber, the little wood chopping dwarf character from these videos. So here's how it went. The original lumber design fits into a 16 by 16 pixel canvas. So the challenge here was to scale up the head while maintaining the simple design and also getting the correct proportions. I like to start out with silhouettes, making sure to focus on the simple shapes. As you can see from the original design, the corners are rounded by a single pixel. But when you increase the canvas size, that would just look way too sharp. So on the larger silhouette, I make sure I remove more pixels from the corners to make them look more rounded. Notice how the hair isn't just a square block anymore, but actually more more circular. It's these translations from the single pixel details into the larger relative details that's key to keeping the essence of the original design. Once I'm happy with the silhouette, I start to rough out the features of the character in the correct proportions. Not only trying to stay true to the original character design, but also what makes anatomical sense. I have this video which walks you through some very standard human head proportions. Please remember these aren't set rules, just a basic guide. Understanding and applying some of the general things I go over in that video will definitely help you create more believable characters anatomically, but it should also help you understand where and when you can skew these proportions to create more interesting and unique characters. So for this challenge, there was a limit to use the NES palette. I used similar colors from the original Pico 8 palette that Lumbar is actually designed with to define the key areas like the hair, nose, and beard. I was gonna use no outline at first, but I kind of just prefer the way it looks. You might have noticed that the original design doesn't have any eyebrows. This was intentional because the space on the head was so small in the original design, but I think this would have looked really weird on the larger portrait, so I've added them in. In my tutorials, I usually show a step-based process. This is just the most logical way I can think of to teach something. But this is what my actual creative process looks like. I thought it was important to show this because if you're a beginner, it might be demoralizing if it doesn't go as smoothly as you planned. But I wanted to show that it's normal to experiment and maybe not get things right the first time. At least for me, anyway. I think experimentation can also be part of the fun. You're exploring lots of different ideas and you get to discover what the final piece looks like as you're making it. So as you can see, I started to experiment with adding more shading colors. But I think I got a little bit carried away here with adding too many colors at once. When you have a lot of options like you do with the NES palette, it can be really easy to get carried away. And the image started to look noisy and flat when really I wanted to get across a stronger sense of 3D form. And when I recognized this in the process, I pulled the shading back to just one color. And this is when everything really started to come together in the way that I wanted it to. Putting intentional limits on yourself can really help you focus on what is important in the process. So for me, it meant less colors so I could focus on the 3D form. I changed the color of the shading to black. This gave it a really moody look, which I felt really matched the grumpy eyes that I went for in the design. I mean, the dragon did set fire to his house after all. When I'm thinking of where to put the shadows, I try to think of the 3D shapes that make up Lumbar's head, which is basically just a bunch of spheres. Once I've got this in mind, I establish a light source, which in this case is in the top right hand side facing down. It can help to imagine or even draw in some cross contour lines, sort of like the wireframe you see in 3D programs. It then becomes really easy to place the shadows to help build the form. If you struggle with shading, I'd highly recommend observing it in real life. Just take a light and shine it an object to see how the shadows form. Videos and pictures don't really do it justice, so try this out yourself. It can be really useful. So with the shadows in, I found that by hiding some of the features in the shadow really helped make this piece look more dramatic. Kind of like an RPG character portrait. Either way, I'm really pleased with how it came out. But look at all these awesome portraits! I like the way the purple is used for anti-aliasing around the mouth line to really soften that out. Cheesy butter killed it here. I love the limited color usage. The features really fade into the shadows on this pirate looking character, which I thought was awesome. And we got a nice moody side profile shot here with a nice use of limited colors again. We even got some traditional art and Aliokas even did a full animation for this. How awesome is that? Make sure you join the Discord to check them all out and to take part in future challenges. Challenges. I've been live streaming on Twitch recently. Check out the links in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.